Today I'm going to show you some ways you can expand your knowledge of all the positions of the pentatonic scale with some unique and interesting ways to practice them. Alright, so as guitar players, we all know how the pentatonic scale sounds and works, and we use it a lot. Because as guitar players, we're typically playing blues, rock, metal, funk, styles of music where the pentatonic scale is a predominant sound. But one of the biggest questions I get from my students is how to expand the pentatonic scale and break out of the same shape in the same box. So one of the first things we probably all learn playing guitar is how to play the basic pentatonic scale form. <laughs> And there's a reason we all learn that shape first. For one thing, it starts with the root, so it's easy to find. If you're playing in the key of A, you find the A, you're playing A minor pentatonic. The other reason is the layout. This is a very simple and easy layout to learn. One, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. It lays out really well with the fingers. But a lot of players, after a certain point, feel boxed in by this and really want to be able to expand playing the scale up and down the neck. So the next step is to then learn all the other pentatonic forms. Now there are five pentatonic scale shapes. There are five notes in the pentatonic scale and each of those shapes gets to start with a different note of the scale. So the A minor pentatonic scale, the notes are A, C, D, E, and G. So each of those notes gets a chance to be the starting note. And if that gets a little high, playing on an acoustic guitar or a guitar where it's hard to reach those frets, you can play that an octave lower. So the next step after learning all of those positions is to learn how to connect them. So you can play fluidly across the neck and you can really express yourself on the guitar using pentatonic scales in all different registers. So one way to do this is to connect the scale forms in playing a three octave scale. So we're gonna to go to an E minor pentatonic and we're gonna play a few notes from each of those positions to get us three octaves of the pentatonic scale. It goes like this. So we have one octave. The second octave and the third octave. So we're starting with an open E and we're going to go 0, 3, 5 and slide up to 7. Then we're going to hop across to the next string 5, 7. Then across to the next string set 5, 7. Then we're going to slide to the ninth fret with your third finger. Then we're going to hop to the next string set. So we're in a new position now. And this is going to be 7 and 9 on the third string. Then we're going to shift to 8 and 10 on the B string, the second string. Slide to 12. And then 10, 12 on the first string. So all together, I'll play it slow. play it a little faster. Anytime you run any of these scales, it's also important to play them backwards. Learning them descending helps you learn the scale, making sure you really know it. I know at first it feels like you're driving backwards, it's a bit confusing, but it really ensures that you know all the notes of the scale, know where they are, know the proper fingerings, and additionally, when you play music, you're also gonna descend as well as ascend. So we wanna get that down. So you can play something like this. Go up. And back down. And I like to throw in an extra note. That G. And 
And this is really useful because when I'm playing and I'm playing, in, say, in the key of E, I'm using E minor pentatonic scale, I'm going to link all those shapes together and do something like this. <laughs> So I don't know exactly when I'm going to move up or move down. I just go with what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling, but I know where all those notes lie in the different positions. So one way I recommend practicing all the pentatonic shapes is to do up one, down the other. And this is a great way to really understand the shapes, being able to move from one to the next and get the full forms under your fingers. So we're going to do this example in F minor pentatonic, and we're going to start right here at the first fret, and we're going to play up the first position. <laughs> and then down the second position. Then up the third position. And then down the fourth position. And then up the fifth position. And then down the first position. We're back at the first position an octave higher. So you get something like this. And then you can go back down. So we'll go down the first position. So you could do the reverse. Start by going down the first position and go up the second position. It's really worth practicing getting that under your fingers to really understand how to link the shapes. So here's another cool example. So what I'm doing is I'm playing an A minor pentatonic scale, but I'm only playing the notes that exist on the first and second string of each form. And I'm doing up one down the other, just like the previous example, but sticking to those two strings. We're going to start in the fifth pentatonic position, and we're going to play D, E, A, G, ascending. So we're thinking over an A minor, A minor pentatonic. Then we're going to go down in the next position, the first position of the pentatonic scale. 8-5, five, 8-5. Five. So going up, then down in the next position. Then we're going to go up in the next position. 8-10, 8-10. Then down in the next position. 12-10, 13-10. Then up the next position. That's 13, 15, 12, 15. Those are fret numbers, by the way. And then we'll go down in the fifth position. So the same position we started, but this time going down. That's 17, 15, 17, 15. And now we're back in the first position, an octave up. We're going to go up. And then we're going to go. And this only works if your guitar has 22 frets. 22, 20, 22, 20. So the whole thing, super slow, sounds like this. You can take it down. And 
you can take this approach and apply it to any string set, any two strings, say for example, the third and fourth string. <laughs> So what this does is it forces you to really learn where each pentatonic scale position is, even isolated to just two strings. Now you wouldn't want to make your entire solo this pattern because it sounds predictable, but you can use bits of it as a way to get from the lower register to the higher register or vice versa. It's also great to just practice the pentatonic scale on one string. Let's say on the third string, we're going to play A minor pentatonic. <laughs> But if we add some sliding to it, we can get kind of a Derek Truck slide guitar kind of thing. So that kind of thing can be cool too, and it really forces you to learn where all the notes are across the fretboard. One more little exercise that's fun to do that you can implement in your playing is to practice each pentatonic scale shape by skipping a string. So in the instance of we're in A minor pentatonic, in the first pentatonic position shape, you will play the notes on the sixth string. Then you'll skip the fifth string, play the notes on the fourth string. Then go back for the fifth string, up for the third string. And then you'll go back to the fourth string, up for the second string, back for the third string, and then up for the first string. So you get something like this. Sounds great going down too. And you can do this with all the pentatonic positions to really understand where those notes are. So you can practice playing larger interval leaps. And in playing, you can do cool things like. Thank you for watching this video. I hope these examples give you some new ideas for your pentatonic scale playing. Make sure to practice them in all keys, practice them with a metronome, and see if they come out in your playing. A lot of these ideas are what you hear when you listen to players like Eric Gales, Joe Bonamassa, Eric Johnson, Larry Carlton, players who have a really great knowledge of the pentatonic scale all the way up and down the fretboard. Hope these are useful. Once again, my name is Jamie Eric. Thank you for watching.